We are on a small farm on the Stroud Preserve near Marshallton, Pennsylvania. This small farm is typical of most small farms in the Mid-Atlantic region. 25 years ago, the farming activities on this land extended all the way down to the edge of the stream. Probably 100% of the fertilizers and pesticides that were being used in the crops were going directly into the stream and contaminating the stream water. What we've done on this farm is we have implemented best management practices throughout the farm. And they start in the upland areas uh, near the agriculture and we have contour farming, terraces, and grass waterways to assure that we can minimize the amount of soil erosion and minimize the movement of fertilizers and pesticides off of these fields downhill towards the stream, which is located right over here. Placed strategically between the stream itself and the farm fields, we have a buffer of trees and a swale that is on dead level around the entire stream. And the purpose of the swale is to capture any stormwater runoff that comes from the fields. Over 90% of the streams that provide the flow to the Chesapeake Bay start as small streams that you can jump across. They are the major points of entry of contaminants. That is where we need to implement best management practices to keep those contaminants out before they move down into our bigger rivers and estuaries. When you look at what's going on in the Chesapeake Bay, particularly Pennsylvania's influence on the Chesapeake Bay, we are the number one source of nitrogen, the most damaging pollutant to the Chesapeake Bay. We are number two in phosphorus and sediment delivery to the Chesapeake Bay watershed. So we have a significant influence on the three major impacts to the bay in terms of pollution, and that is nitrogen, phosphorus, and sediment. Nitrogen is contributing significantly to the oxygen dead zone in the bay year after year. This particular study has shown that by moving the farming activity away from the stream by just 100 feet, planting a forest, creating a swale, creating a grass strip, we are now intercepting at least 26% of the nitrogen and as much as 43% of the sediment. Associated with the sediment is phosphorus. We also know that the presence of a streamside forest buffer along a small stream channel enhances the ability of the stream to process nitrogen two to eight times uh, more efficiently than without that forest buffer. And so we are doing a good job right now with 100 feet of space in keeping a, a significant amount of contaminants from entering this small stream. Typically, one best management practice, or BMP, is not going to solve the problems on an agricultural setting. And what we employ is what we call a treatment train approach. It's a series of best management practices put together in a comprehensive way so that you identify and address pollution at its source to maximize the pollution reduction throughout the entire setting. We can't think of a streamside forest buffer as being a panacea, a solution that will allow you to do anything you want uphill. When there's a significant rainfall event, there is surface water runoff from those cornfields. The runoff, however, is intercepted by the contours of the farm, by the terraces and the swales. As the water moves downhill through the grass waterways, small particles of sediment are actually being eliminated. And so without those uphill practices, the streamside forest buffer would be overwhelmed. We need an entire system. Scientific studies now indicate that 100 feet or more is really best management practice for a, a streamside forest buffer. But if a given landowner can only give 50 feet, then it's still good management practice. And in fact, 25 feet is good management practice. We should take whatever we can get. We'll start small and build on it. There are now a wide variety of state and federal programs. They cover all the costs of creating the forest, maintaining the forest, and also, in many cases, will provide rental payments to the farmer. The vast majority of farmers are stewards of the land, and they are interested and willing to consider and apply these best management practices on their landscape. Not only do they improve water quality, but in many cases they improve the viability of their agricultural operations, 
they improve the production value of their agriculture operations, and therefore they improve their bottom line. The science is now clear that the widespread implementation of streamside forest buffers, it's one of the simplest, most cost-effective approaches to eliminating many of the problems in the Chesapeake Bay.